Hey, this is Matt once again. We're about to another video. There's another paid request this time for Dalton. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested, requested any type of videos, topics, reactions, re reviews, whatever, uh, commentaries out of the blueness, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for the 1977 film Death Game. Now, Death Game was the film that Eli Roth remade and turned into Knock Knock. And Knock Knock, if you don't know, I ranted on and said was probably the worst film Keanu Reeves had ever been a part of. And might be the worst Eli Roth film I had ever seen, and that's saying something. I hated and despised that movie. Now, the original, I do think it's better, but I wouldn't call it good. It's a masterpiece compared to Eli Roth's version, but I still wouldn't call it a good movie, but at least there's a few stuff of merit I could deal with. The original film apparently had a lot of production problems with the director and the stars. The stars said the director didn't know what he was doing. I, I wasn't there. The two ladies in this film is Sandra Locke and Colleen Camp. Uh, Sandra Locke worked with Clint Eastwood quite a bit. They were in an item for many years. That's why Sandra Locke was in films like Sudden Impact with the Dirty Harry film. That's the one where Dirty Harry says, Go ahead, make my day. Sandra Locke was the st one of the stars of that film. Uh, every which way but lose, any which way you can, the gauntlet, I mean, they were together, and Sandra Locke was in a lot of movies with Clint Eastwood at that time. And then Colleen Camp, she's appeared in quite a few, I remember her as one of the female detectives in Die Hard with a Vengeance, and that group with uh, Bruce Willis. And she's been in other stuff too, but I remember her the most from that. And I thought the two, while script-wise, they're not really told much what to do, other than being crazy. I still thought they were better actresses at being crazy than the two ladies in the knock-knock. <clears throat> Again, while they're still kind of annoying as well, I can still see that their acting at being crazy has a bit more believability. And craziness compared to the girls in the the new one. And also, it seems like I don't want to see if it's a different message in this one, because the opening text says it's based on a true story, whatever, about how no man can insulate himself from the evils which pervade society. So it does go more into. Like, these ladies are crazy and evil, while the, the remake is more about, well, Keanu, you're being punished. You should not have cheated on your wife. And with all social media and putting it on Twitter, I think this idea, now, if you want to handle it, there's better, smarter ways to do it. Eli Roth was not the guy to do it. And back then... When these two ladies go, well, you know what? We can always tell people, your neighbors, your wife, that, you know, you, you're a sex deviant. And the 70s, they seem like more believable that he could get, because it's not as much to do to the logical wise to prove your innocence, that 70s. We get to the remake, not not many stuff has happened that has been the contrary, that has been the opposite. So there's a lot of history to look at and go, no, there's possible doubt because of this and this and this and this case. Maybe that wasn't really the way it was in 1977, so the time period seemed, okay, more of a threat on that nature. In a weird, I don't want to say it's more believable, but it's more, I just something to it that, like the opening credits of this one, I thought had more interest than the entire movie of Knock Knock, 
does the opening credits are they these pictures of kids drawings while the song the two girls singing about my good old dad and sorry about the the background noise um, that shows I have something in the microwave so it's ready um, I'll get it after it that way by the time I'm done with the review we'll have cooled down But it's like his drawings in this good old dad song, which a lot of people are annoyed by. I was fine listening to, listening to it the first time because listen, listening to the song once, I thought oh, it was kind of a, I don't want to say creepy, but it's like, that seems like a song two crazy ladies would sing. Is this type of song with, and then kids drawing. This is some, maybe it's creepy, like some kind of creepy. Maybe creepy is the right word. Something off that I got more of a feeling in that one bit than an entire movie of Knock Knock, which was a a laughable. If it's trying to be a comedy, it's it was laughable in the wrong ways. If it's trying to be scary, it wasn't. But even this has a problem. Like, uh, is it trying to be scary? Is it trying to be funny? And you're not sure. And that's the thing. I don't want to say this is a good movie. I mean, the lead guy played by Seymour Castle, which I've seen that actor and other stuff in the later on. But apparently he had such problems with the director and the production, he didn't go back to dub his own voice. So you could tell it's someone else's dub. So it's like watching a foreign film. Like you, you could tell that's not the voice coming out of this guy's mouth. And that is uh, distracting, to say the least. And he has a, he's a businessman in San Francisco. His wife and kids have left. He, it's his, around his 40th birthday. His wife's tending to a family emergency. These are two women. It's raining. Can we use your phone? And this initial bit, it seems more understandable because the two women are just acting normal and they're, they're dressed normal. And, oh, hey, come in. You know, your, your clothes are wet. Like, it's seemingly innocent. More so than not not would seem like a bad opening to a porno. So he's seduced to the threesome. Oh, no, no, I'm married. Although, the director, whoever does not know how to shoot this, because it's like a porn director forgetting how to direct porn. This is blurry. There's these weird close-ups. Maybe I saw a nipple. Here's a... And shoulder like it, you're like what the fuck is what is what is even the the purpose what is I'm sitting there going what 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 it is really badly directed poorly directed and then a lot of it's like they tackle they laugh the guy getting pissed you got manners of an alley cat fuck you I mean, is this supposed to be comedic? Is it supposed to be for tension? Is it supposed to be for both? And you get these weird shots of the film, like a ketchup bottle slowly oozing out ketchup. It sits there for like 40 minutes while we hear a bunch of random music and noise. And it's just a ketchup bottle. Slow ketchup coming out. I'm like, I guess, is this supposed to be an artistic shot? Symbolism? I don't know. It's symbolism for the blood that will soon be spilled? I don't fucking know, man. And then the two women are like, well, we could accuse you of being sex deviant. We could tell your neighbors what well, your customers think. Like they'll, they talk about, well, you could be in jail. But they're also about, well, what will your customers think? What will your neighbors think? And they tackle. One of the things I remember blowing a gas on Not Not is when they ask for a ride back and Keanu Reeves says yes. I thought that was handled actually better in this original version. Because like, give us a ride back then. You gotta be kidding me. I don't know. Maybe they did do this in the remake. But it was done so piss poorly I forgot. And it still didn't make anything better. But here the way it played out where the two are like. Well, could ask your neighbors for a ride. Would you ask someone over there? That person for a ride. What do you think? At least that makes more sense. And then he's more angry about it. But Keanu didn't. He's like. 
you know, because it's Tiano. He doesn't have this angry vibe like fucking. Fuck. This guy does, even though he's dubbed. He still has that angry like fucking. You know, just get out. I'm like, okay, that makes more believable sense to me compared to the remake. But then, like I said, it's a lot of padding, location shots, location pans, and then the two women get bat, they knock them out, they tie them to the bed. That song, I didn't mind at the beginning, they play that song like three or four more times. I'm like, okay, you're beating a dead horse. If people are annoyed by the song once, they don't. you don't annoy them more with three or four times that fucking song is played. If you're like me and I didn't mind this song at the beginning, the fact it plays three more times, I'm like, oh god, we get the point. You get the idea. They even say in dialogue that their dad did stuff to them. Oh, remember, dad? You pretended to be asleep, remember? And I drove you crazy? You get the idea that, you know, both their dads or her, whatever, someone's dad fucked, with, fucked them up. Which I don't think was ever brought up in the new one. So at least there's some kind of explanation that you could gauge in. And like I said, I don't think it's a that good of a movie because you're not sure if it's com funny or supposed to be suspenseful. It's really neither one. I think there's moments that are like the new one that are laughable but not in the way they intended. Like there's a point they throw a cat out of a fucking window. And the way that's done, it's a horrible idea, but the way it's done makes it seem laughable. There are times where it's like poorly lit or poorly directed, like the, the threesome sex scene is poorly directed. There are times in the third hour where it's poorly lit that I could barely tell what's going on. Uh, the ending is more satisfying than the new one, but it's still uh, like a what the fuck was that? The lead guy being dubbed, which, you know, that's the guy not coming back because he had such a shit time working on it. There's a lot of issues. And the third act just seems like it goes forever where there's a delivery guy, they kill him, they dump him in a fish tank. They knock the lead guy out, they pour milk on him. They do their trial, and the guy's asking, why do you hate so much? And I will say... At least this has kernels of good stuff, unlike the remake, Not Not, which has nothing good. You have Keanu Reeves saying, it was free pizza! It was free pizza! That stupid fucking shit. This scene worked a lot better. Where the lead guy is, you know, which I think would have worked better if the actor did return to voice his own performance. But it's like, you know, what's your guys, what's your two ladies problem? Why do you hate so much? Okay? I have a daughter, you know, I have kids. And then Sandra Lodge like, you'll never understand. And you get like a certain kernel of truth of Sandra Lodge that, yeah, there's a lot more going on. It's not for a message about men are misogynistic bad. It's, no, these two are crazy. And they've, some bad things have happened to them, but they are crazy. And they are being evil. Because they killed this innocent guy. Which I think they kill some of the, the remake as well, but... Like, Sandra Locke, Colleen Camp... Yeah, they cackle, they laugh, but they still seem like better actresses... And craziness than the two leads, like I said before. And spoiler alert... Spoilers, they build it up, build it up... Feels padded, feels like it goes on too long... My neighbor's roosters feel the same way... This is going on too fucking long... You're guilty... The lead guy's whimpering. You think they don't kill him? They don't. They leave him be. They leave. That song plays again. But then they turn onto the street and this random van pops up, kills both of them. And you're like, it's a whiplash of... What, 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 what the fuck was that? Just this out of the blue van. It's more satisfying than the remake. Because the remake these two bitches did away with. It's on social media. That wasn't a case in this point. At this point no one knows what happened. And when the wife comes home. He's going to find her husband tied up. Crying. And this one guy dead. And he'll tell the truth. 
And then those two women are going to be found dead on the fucking road. So, oh, those are the two women. They were right nearby walking. And uh, so, in a way, it's more satisfying ending than the remake. But it's definitely a what the fuck. Like, at the very least, director, writer, whoever, you could have at least had it where maybe on TV or on the radio from time to time, there was this talk of this runaway van or this crazy, there was a robbery or some crazy nut is going around this van and here's what the van looks like and you hear, you see it on TV a few times or you hear it on the radio a few times and you build it up. So in the back of your head, you'll tell you, they mention this van and maybe like, oh, you know, the ladies here, they go, man, there's a lot of crazy people in the world. Or probably some poor loser who, like, you you can have them comment it, not make the audience think that's going to lead to something, but just her or them contemplate about the ir irony of saying someone else is crazy when they're crazy or like something about that. And then when that happens at the end, you go, oh, that's the van that, you know, foreshadowing, you know, foreshadowing. That just seems out of the blue. I'm like, it almost seems as if it's a last minute call. Like, we gotta have something happen to these ladies. They can't get away with it. What? At least foreshadow it something, man. So I do think it's still a bad film. I'm just not ranting on it because it's still much better than Knock Knock. It's a better version. But it's still a better version of that. Uh, yeah, at least the ending, the did was coming to him. At least Sandra Locke, Colleen Camp is a better, are better actresses. At times they're irritating, but I play them more on the script than they're acting. I think with the remake, it's both. Keanu Reeves is not embarrassing himself, and I like Keanu Reeves, but he embarrassed the fuck out of himself in that. And, again, this seems more like these are two crazy bitches, while... The new one trying to be, maybe trying to be a satire on torture or home invasion, but it it wasn't funny or creative or witty. Probably the closest is got is when he, Keanu Reeves accidentally lights the 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 post. That's probably the closest. Eli Roth got to satire. But it's still like. Not a satisfying ending in the slightest. This one. I, it's hard to say it's satisfying. Because it's so out of the blue. But more so than the new one. So, Death game. You know. The, the, the original I think is better. It's not good. But it's better than the remake. So with that said. Thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.